Okay, uh, my talk today is about modifying the Victor rat trap um, so it effectively kills stoats and, and we also tested ship rats because, um, well, the target and also quite a, a big non-target species. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge my, my colleague Bruce Warburton um, to work with me on this and the, the research was funded by um, the Ministry of Science and Innovation. For a bit of background, um, so why why bother modifying the Victor Victor rat trap? Um, which cheap? Like I, I looked up prices at the current prices in pe with pest management services, and you know these these figures I'll quote here: eight dollars versus um, sixty three for a dock two hundred. That's just for single traps. So of course you're going to have economies of if you buy in bulk. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the lightweight, the, the Victor trap, so you can shove you know, 20 or 30 in a pack pretty easily. And um, so this small size and this cheapness, it, it opens up the option of putting um, lots of traps out in small areas. So um, yeah, just instead of having a multi-capture trap, well basically you turn it into a multi-capture trap by having multiple traps at a single site. So. With this work, we also tested on ship rats to because they're like if you're targeting stoats, they're going to be the most likely non-target species. So we, we tested them as well. Bruce and Nick Potu in 2002 they they tested the modified Victor rat trap. Um, now this was a design that had been approved in Canada. It was um, you know approved for stoats in Canada, or what they call them over there is the short-tailed weasel or ermine and it's the same species. Um, so that same design was tested here in New Zealand but it failed. Now the problem was um, basically New Zealand stoats are twice the size of the Canadian stoats so um, it just didn't have a sufficient impact momentum, sufficient force hitting, hitting the stoat to kill, kill them effectively. Like the last, the last stoat that failed was 450 grams and um, it got struck on the head and was didn't didn't kill it like it stunned it, but it, it recovered. So um, further background. So so the, this NAWAC testing testing uh, Lanky has been doing it for the last decade. Um, if you want to have a look at it online, it's it's there's the the uh, the web address, um, and basically it means we have to have you you do pen trials testing animals with a kill trap and you need to have uh, well, norm, the normal sample size that's chosen is 10 animals and if you choose 10 that means all 10 of them have to be killed uh, correctly so that means they have to be rendered irreversibly unconscious under under three minutes so irreversible means they progress from unconsciousness to death and you can use a larger sample size which allows animals to survive, um, like if you choose 15 I think you're allowed one or one or two to exceed the three minute threshold but they still have to die within under five minutes or be un irreversible unconscious under five minutes. So um, but like I say most most people choose the 10 out of 10 um, sample size. Um, now I put the slide in as an example of how not to kill a, kill a stoat. Um, this, this is a, a stoat that was caught in a a snappy rat trap uh, work where we were actually targeting rats and um, this animal was still alive the next day and you can see it struck across the neck um, which basically does not kill stoats that sort of um, you know it would eventually die of hypothermia or starvation but if it was remained stuck in the trap but it could easily pull out or um, they're just too armour plated in the neck and the carotid arteries which you need to occlude to stop blood flow to the brain you just don't block off those arteries so that animal will stay alive for an extended period. So what you do when you're targeting stoats is you hit them across the nut and um, target the top of the top of the head. So this time around uh, we did further modification to the trap um, Initially we increased the spring tension by, by ramping up the back of the springs, putting, putting metal 
plates under the back of the springs, which are about three mil, three mils thick, and that doing that increases that that impact momentum. So so um, so we amped it up, and then also as in the initial trials, we put a shroud um, to sort of direct over the, the front of the trap to direct the animal into the into the mouth of the trap and position it correctly. Um, so that's the plastic shroud. Now initially, um, as you'll see from the photos, the the first shroud we tried was too deep and we had a stoked survivor when he pushed in too far across the bait trigger and got struck on the net. So he just pulled out and survived. Um, so from that we moved to, um, you can see from the photo, we knew, used to move to a shorter shroud which made sure that every time the stoke would be positioned correctly for a, for a hit on top of the head. Um, and the other thing of course was changing the trigger to from a treadle trigger, so that, that flat plastic plate, we cut that back to change it into a pull trigger. So by modifying, keeping the pivot point of the treadle and then just modifying that and putting a, um, a wire sort of S-bend thing with felt on it to make a biting, a biting bar for the animal to come along and bite and pull to trigger the trap. So those were the modifications. Uh, and then we tested them in two different sets. So there initially we used a vertical set, so the traps were put against a post. Um, and this was about so far above the ground, this was 18, 20 centimetres above, above the ground, so stoats could come along on the ground and just reach up into it. But with rats, being a smaller animal, they, they would just climb up into it. Um, you know, larger rats could still stand on the ground, but mostly they had to, they had to climb up into it. Um, so that, that sort of, with that, you know, that could be considered a Kiwi safe set, but you would have to, in any area you used it, you'd have to think about your non-targets, what could get into that sort of set and be at risk. So we sort of had advice from Doc um, that it could potentially be a Kiwi safe set. And the other thing we, the other set we did was the horizontal set, so trap put in a Corfu tunnel, um, so this is probably a more standard way of setting with kill traps and with a, a pipe vestibule in front of the trap. So minimise the amount of core flute used for the tunnel and the vestibule basically to keep out um, cats or possums trying to reach in and get their paw caught in the traps and any ground birds that might be, um, might be at risk like, well not only ground birds like robins are one species that can be put at risk by tunnel set traps and um, you certainly if you're just using a, an ordinary tunnel as you might use for for tracking tunnels um, you know tracking tracking card sort of setups that's you, you can get robins that'll go in and get that get caught so um, so those were the two sets now this is just an example of a stoat getting caught in a, um, a vertical set so yeah, that's basically the perfect strike. Across the ears, you more or less, you just crush the skull. Um, that animal is instantly unconscious with that impact. So, so if you just, if we look at the results from the, you know, past, we've got the 10 out of 10 stoats with that set. Um, now, so if, first of all, we'll just look at the table. Um, the weights, you know, generally it was 205 up to 363 grams for stoats, so it's a good range of weights for stoats. That's quite typical, 200 to 400 grams for your stoat weights in New Zealand. Um, now the papebral reflex, that's the blinking reflex that indicates when they're unconscious or not. So you touch the eye or blow, eye, um, blow air on the eye, and if there's any blink, that means the animal is still conscious. Um, but in the, this case, with the crushed skull, you, you get instant unconsciousness, so there's, you don't get an eye reflex. And of interest, it, it takes a few minutes for the heart to stop. So um, yeah, that's, that's just pretty standard for any, any animal really in a kill trap. Um, you know, four or five minutes is, is nothing. And if you just look at the strike locations there, they basically, with that modification of the trap, we got very consistent strike location, basically straight across the ears, smash skull, dead stoke. 
Now with the horizontal set, um, so this is, to remind you, this is in the tunnel with the vestibule. Um, again, good range of weights, 181 to 356. Um, again, everything instantly unconscious. There's a wee bit of variation in location rather than just straight across the ears. There's a bit of back and forth, but um, you know, you have a, a, a zone of about, you know, one, one and a half to two centimetres of lethal zone on a stoat's head. So there is a wee bit of leeway there for that strike location. Um, now there's a couple of examples of stoats which took a long time for their heart to stop. Now these animals were still instantly unconscious, but um, yeah, this, um, but it just sort of depends on the part of the brain which has been damaged, is how long that, that, that animal takes to die, or that, I should say, that animal takes for the heart to stop. More or less it's brain dead, but um, that sort of takes a, a wee bit for the message to get through. So there's a couple, you know, a couple there that took a wee bit longer than what we normally see. Uh, here's an example of a rat getting caught in a vert vertical set. Um, so again, pretty much across the ears, just in front of the ears, around that area, ears and neck. The rats, they're not as strongly constructed as the stoat, so a neck strike is equally lethal to a head strike. And they show a few nerves after that first impact. So, um, weights, weights, 100, 150 grams, that sort of size. So, you know, significantly smaller than, than, than stoats. Um, so it's more than enough grunt to deal to ship rats. Um, again, you know, for people reflex, we expect, but are instantly unconscious. The times in the tables just indicate how long it takes for us to get out of the observation hut, get into the pen and start monitoring the animal. So it's simple as that. You, if they've got a smashed skull, they're instantly unconscious. So as you can see with the strike locations, there's just a wee bit of variation there of neck and across the ears and that sort of, so there's a wee bit of variation, but very lethal with, with ship rats. Um, and the horizontal sets, again, you can see um, yeah, a lot more consistent there with the strike location and the, when the animal's coming in horizontally. So, um, yeah, no problem, no problem killing the ship rats. Okay, from here, the next steps, um, we're in the middle of writing up this work and we'll publish it in a, in a, a journal. I uh, haven't quite decided which journal to choose yet. Um, now, and the next step after that, well, we need to talk to trap suppliers about can these modifications be commercially produced. Um, and then from that, can we move on to field testing and even compare it with the, the self-resetting traps that on the market, the good, good nature Henry trap, just to see, um, you know, just assess the cost, of, cost effectiveness. Um, okay, what we're talking about here using these cheap, it's all about having that cheapness, or using a cheap trap and whether it, it really is co cost effective. Uh, and part of this, of course, is, is you have to have a, a palatable bait on that trigger and, and it applies to any trap set. Um, and it's got to be out there for extended periods and it's got to remain palatable. So we've got sort of ongoing work with that happening as well. Um, so that's about it. So I'd just like to acknowledge Jane Arrow and Sam Brown that helped with the doing the the, trip, the pen tests. Um, yeah, sometimes it took many hours of observation to get a single animal, and, and uh, yeah, it's long nights and uh, and pretty cold at times. And again, thanks to the Ministry of Science and, and Innovation for the funding. And that's it. So if anybody has any questions, they can ring me at Landcare Lincoln. Uh, and just a note, don't handle stokes like that. That's that's a drug stoat, and um, it just, yeah, I wouldn't advise handling un, undrug stokes.